Hello everybody and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra. I'm going to say hello in a few of your languages today. Haven't done that for a while. So, Salam Alaikum, Namaste, Vanakum. I believe those are both Indian languages, Tamil and Hindi. And I also have to say Ni Hao, Ni Hao Ma and Sawadi Ka to China and Thailand. So today guys we're going to learn 12 verbs that are all more interesting or more advanced versions of very easy and simple verbs that we use every day. So I want to help you to change those easy and simple verbs that you're using every day to something more interesting or something more advanced. Also some of these are more formal so they might be helpful for your writing or for passing exams and things like that. Now with each verb what I will do is I will say the present form of the verb, I will tell you if it's regular or irregular and I will also give you an example sentence of how to use the verb. Are you ready to learn? Let's get started. Number one, one of the most common verbs in English, get. Get this, get up, get out, get in, get on. Oh my goodness, we use get all the time. However, there are some other verbs that mean the same as get but are perhaps a little bit more formal. There is to obtain, to obtain. Often on formal writing, you will see this verb, to obtain. For example, you would say, I just obtained my driving test certificate, meaning I got the certificate which shows that I passed my driving test. I'm hoping to get this soon. So to obtain, often used for official things, you can use it in writing, it's very common in formal emails or in a work environment and things like that. So to obtain. Obtain is a regular verb, so in the past it would be obtained in the past simple and in the past participle, so putting it with, for example, the present perfect, it would be I have obtained. Number two, again, this is a synonym, so a similar meaning word to a very common word. It is to occur and of course the similar word which it is based on is happen, to happen. We use happen all the time. What's happened? What's happening? Um, this has just happened. However, in more formal situations, or if you want to change sometimes and not use happen, you can use the verb to occur. So you can say, oh, something occurred yesterday. Usually this is in a more formal context that you would say this. So for example, you might say it in an interview, you might say it in a work context, um, but you can also use it in writing, in written work, it's very common. An example sentence would be, an incident occurred last night at 11pm. The police are investigating events. So occur is a regular verb again, so in the past simple it would be occurred. I hope you all know your regular verbs and how they work. Because it's regular, of course, in the past participle, so the third form of the verb, it would also be occurred. Number three is to require, to require. Now this is based on the verb to need, to need. To need, we use it all the time. I need a drink, I need to go out, I need a break. Need is something we use all the time. However, the more formal equivalent is to require. If you're asking a question of somebody in a library or in a formal context, you might say, oh, I require this, or what do you require for me to get this? What do you require for me to obtain this? For example, my students at university all usually require a six in their IELTS to get to their course. So they require that. And on any formal writing, it would say, these are your requirements. So the noun is actually a requirement. What do you require to get better at English? Leave me a comment below, try and use the word in a sentence. What do you require to get better at your English or to improve at English? Number four. Now, we always use the verb to look, but there are actually many verbs which are the equivalent of look, but change the meaning slightly according to how you look. Now, if you look quickly at somebody, we would say to glance, to glance. Okay, so this is number four, to glance, a quick look. So if I quickly look across the room, I glance. Now for this one, for number four, you're going to get two for one because they have another verb to teach you, which is similar to look. And this is to stare, to stare. So to stare means to look for a long period at somebody or at something. It can be quite rude if you're looking at someone. 
Um, but if you're staring at something, so perhaps in an art gallery, you see a beautiful painting and you can't take your eyes off the painting, you could be staring at it or staring at a beautiful view. So it's a long look, a long unbroken look to stare. I have an example sentence with both of these verbs. I glanced fleetingly at him because I didn't want to stare. Number five is to ponder or to wonder. They have a very similar meaning to the verb to think, but they are a little different. To wonder and to ponder are to consider something, to think carefully, to think about it. To think can just be we're thinking all the time, we're thinking in the moment, it's something which is constantly happening in our brains. But to wonder and to ponder suggests that you are considering something and you're thinking more carefully about it. For example, I'm wondering about whether to start Italian lessons again, but I don't know because it takes up a lot of time. But I'm thinking about it, I'm considering it. To ponder is perhaps even more, you're thinking even more carefully about it. And perhaps we use that in a more formal context or in literature and things like that. It's less common than to wonder. Number six. Now instead of using the verb to begin, we can use the verb initiate. Initiate means that we started something or we began something. So if I say I initiated the meeting with her, I'm saying that it was me who organised this, who, who started this. So we use this verb, for example, when we had the idea. So I initiated a new programme at my work. Uh, she initiated the first date with me. He initiated the first kiss. Number seven is a synonym of one of the most common verbs in the English language, come, to come. So this synonym is attend, to attend. So you don't always need to use the verb come. Sometimes you can say attend, like you can say I attended the meeting, I attended the party. Uh, it is a little bit more formal, but there are many contexts which you can use it in. For example, it's perfectly normal to say, oh yesterday I attended the meeting, so work contexts are very normal for this. Or you can use it for going to classes, going to conferences, things like that. So you can say, yesterday I attended my Italian class or my Spanish class or something like that. Or maybe even my class in Hindi or in Chinese. <gasps> one day I might attend one of those. Is there something you're attending now, guys? Comment below and tell me, what do you attend? Now again, it's a regular verb, so in the past form it would be attended attended. Number eight, to assist. This is a synonym of the verb to help, to help. So to help is a very easy verb, we use it all the time, but if you want a more formal verb or something that's a bit different, you can use to assist. So you can say, can I assist you with something? Do you need my assistance? Would be the noun. So to assist. Again, it's a regular verb. I'm very lucky I chose lots of regular verbs for you. Well, you're very lucky. Assisted, assisted. So it's an id sound at the end. So past form, assisted. Number nine. Again, I'm going to give you two verbs, actually, in this case, which are similar to the verb do. So you can also say to carry out. To carry out means to do something. Again, it is a little bit more formal, but we can use it in many contexts. You can say, I think he's going to carry it out, meaning I think he's going to do it. For example, you might say, I hope he carries out his duty, or I hope he carries out the change that he wants to happen at work, something like that. So to carry out. You can also use the verb to execute instead of do, but this is much more formal. So to execute can also mean to kill somebody, and in the old days in England, when people used to have their heads chopped off when they did something bad, um, we would call the person who did this the executioner. But it just means the person who did it, the person who did it, so to execute. So an example sentence could be, the British people are not sure if we're going to execute Brexit. So if Brexit will actually happen, or if we're going to do Brexit. We're not sure. I won't get into politics, guys. That's all I'll say for now. Carry out and execute, just like the others, are regular verbs. Number 10, to create or to generate. Both are synonyms of the verb to make. To create usually means that you have made something from nothing, so from the beginning. 
So I created this painting, or Steve Jobs created Apple and iPhones, to make it. Make and create are very similar, however there are some occasions where we wouldn't use create and we would use make. For example, you would say I made a cake or I made a suggestion. So there are differences between those two. If you want to learn more about the verb to make, Layla and I have a great video about the differences between make and do and the certain situations where we need to use make. So check that video out up here. Number 11, this is another verb which is similar to make and it is to generate, to generate. To generate means to create, but normally on a larger scale. So to generate is similar to make, but we use it in slightly different contexts. For example, it can mean to cause something, to lead to another thing happening. We usually talk about it on a larger scale, something having produced something. For example, we might say the agricultural industry generated three million pounds of income last year. So this is where we're saying they produced it, they caused it, just like the example I gave earlier of fire generates heat, it produces it. Past form of generate, you guessed it, it's a regular ED verb, so it would be generated. Number 12. So another verb that we use all the time in English is to know. So these verbs are synonyms of know, but they describe a certain way of knowing or a certain context in which we might know something. So the first one is to be conscious of, to be conscious of, to be conscious of. So it's a verb phrase really because conscious is an adjective but we need to say we are conscious, it needs to go with the verb to be because it describes a state of being. To be conscious of, this is to be aware of, to know it's here, to have consciousness about it. So an example would be, I'm conscious of the fact that she's not really happy when she's with my friends. I'm conscious of the fact that she's not really happy when she's with my friends. Another synonym of know is to realise, but this is where you didn't know something before and then you know it. Suddenly you know it and you've realised it. For example, you could say, I've just realised that I've lived here for three years. Wow, I didn't know that I'd lived here for three years. I didn't realise it until now. I've just realised it. So to know something in the moment, quickly. I've just realised he doesn't love me. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I hope it helps you to build your vocabulary, to expand it a little bit more and to replace some of those easy and simple verbs with something more interesting, especially in a more formal context. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like if you did like it and don't forget to follow Love English on social media, on our Facebook, our Instagram and our Twitter. Also guys, please leave me a comment trying to use these verbs in a sentence. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. What can I assist you with? Hello. Want to be in the video? Want to be in the video? <laughs>